Hey yo folks. <coughs> hey yo folks. Whoa. <coughs> hey yo folks. Whoa. <coughs> hey yo folks. Whoa. <coughs> hey yo folks. I have the stream playing in a browser window on Twitch in the background. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there was a weird feedback loop, um, and I apologize, but I think we're going to be better now. And Sitsu says it's improved, so apologies. Um, so, yeah, this is episode 63 of Unedited by Coding. I'm Nick McPhee. Um, Izitsu is up way past Izitsu's bedtime. Um, thank you for being here and thank you to everybody for being here. Um, we had some conversations, um, about how to do some scheduling stuff. And one of the outcomes of that is we're going to play around with doing some advent of code exercises in Rust. I started doing some advent of code, not in the stream, just on my own back in December when it rolled out and I did um, uh, oh that's good to hear I'm glad to hear that um, uh, and I did like about five days worth out of 25 so I didn't make very much progress and I was doing them in both rust and closure I was sort of curious to see what that would feel like um, and we could do that um, we, uh, could also, and that my, my plan at the moment is to just do them in Rust in the stream. But if people are like, yeah, let's do a bunch of things. We could do a bunch of things. And that would be totally a plausible thing. But for now, I figure we'll do it in Rust. Um, and I want to start back at the first day of the advent of code. Um, and I'll just pretend I haven't done it yet. Um, and that'll get us warmed up. And, and one of the things I also want to do that I didn't do when I was working on it um, back in December is actually try to do something a little better with the error handling. I was just being kind of brutal about the error handling <coughs> um, when I was working on it before. And I was just unwrapping everywhere and not che really checking for any errors and you know i mean it's just puzzles so maybe it doesn't really matter but um it didn't make me feel good about myself as a programmer or a human being um and so i think i'm going to try to use the anyhow crate um as a way of trying to manage the air handling a little bit um so that's cool um, and so Azitsu, are you still here because you're making some progress on this problem that you're working on and it, um, you know, you would have, if you'd had any good sense, you would have gone to bed or you would be going to bed, but like, oh, I'm getting somewhere. I'm going to stay up and make this happen. Um, if you are best of luck, I hope that that works out well. <clears throat> um, so, uh, we should, oh, commence Kate here. Um, we should start actually by, um, not that one. I want this one. No, I don't even want that one. Oh, I know what I, ah, I cannot manage my own stuff. Okay. Uh, fine. Well, where'd my thing go? Oh, I know where it went. There we go. That was totally unprofessional and uncoordinated. So if you're not familiar, Advent of Code is, uh, has, 
I think this was the third year. Um, uh, so I guess I'm glad that you would still be up without the stream. Um, and I hope that you work well when it's late and dark and quiet. Um, you, you're probably one of the people that prefer that all my screens were in dark mode, but uh, I don't like dark mode. So sorry about that. Um, so advent of code, I think this is the third year. They have a series of puzzles. So there's 25 puzzles. And the idea is you do them uh, starting on December 1st and running to Christmas. Um, and they are made available sort of as you go. So, you you know, in theory, if you showed up on the 1st, you'd have access to the puzzle for day one, but you wouldn't have access to any of the other puzzles. And to win, as it were... You need to get 25 stars, and you can get two stars per day. So if you did half of the days um, completely, or you did all of the days just up to the first puzzle, um, you'd get all the stars. I have never done it where I've gotten all the stars, or even enough of the stars. Um, during the school year, this period of time is insane, Frankly, this is the end of the semester and finals week and grades are due and then traveling for the holidays. And this was like not even an option. In theory, it could have been an option um, this year because of sabbatical, although I did not put a lot of effort into it. I was focusing on other things. So we'll come back to it late and that'll be fine. The world will be okay. Um, so let's have a look and see what the first problem is. Um, so all of this part of the description is basically just what I said, like collecting stars by solving puzzles. Um, and here the elves, so the elves are getting these star fruit, um, and we need to get 50 stars by December 25th. Um, and so the elves are off on this expedition to get the fruit. And the j jungle is too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or across or access for the air, air. So they go on foot. And so they'll be carrying their material, which includes food. Um, so the elves are all carrying calories. And the elves write, each elf writes down how many calories it's carrying. And it's actually writing down the number of calories for each food item it has. So this be a single elf with three food items with worth a thousand calories, two thousand calories, and three thousand calories respectively. This next elf, um, and we've changed elves because of the blank line tells us we've changed elves, has four thousand calories, a single item worth four thousand calories, etc. Um, and this just says what I just said. Um, when the elves get hungry and eat extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. So they need to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, it is 24,000 calories, which is what's being carried by this elf right here. So this elf has 7 plus 8 is 15 plus 9 is 24,000 calories. Um, so if we need calories, we're going to go to that elf. So our task is to find the elf cal carrying the most calories and how many total calories is that elf carrying. That's our job. Our input is just a text file. I've already downloaded that. And then we compute the answer, pop it in here. If it's the right answer, we get the star and we move on to the second half of today, that day's puzzle. Um, if it's incorrect, we get a, this didn't work. I think we have to wait 60 seconds or something before we can submit again to um, sort of protect themselves against denial of service things and stuff like that. Um, so we'll have that to do. Uh, let me check one thing. Cool. Uh, so let's do it. Let us try to solve this problem. Um, so uh, I've got a stub here for day one. Um, so there's some closure related stuff. We're going to ignore that and we'll just worry about the rust advent, um, directory and I've got a bin directory and I'll just make a different binary for every day. Um, and so this is the day one, uh, binary I've turned on piles of clippy warnings cause I like being told 
like ways to improve my code. Um, and I've included anyhow, I mentioned that that's one of the things I want to be uh, trying to use to improve the error handling in the code. And we've got a main that currently needs to be implemented. Um, I've downloaded the input. Rip. And so obviously we had the sample input um, over here, which was just a handful of elves. The real input has many, many elves. So I don't know how many lines this is, uh, but it's a lot. So yeah, so 2,200 lines of input. Um, so we do have some reasonable number of uh, elves and obviously they have very different collections of calories. Um, certainly you wouldn't be able to do all this and go, well, the answer is clearly the fifth elf, um, which is good, right? That's what makes it interesting. Um, so we are going to try to deal with this. Um, most of these problems are going to involve reading some kind of text file and splitting it up in some fashion uh, and then doing some, at least the, the first five. And, and I, in general, with these kinds of puzzle things, this is a common pattern. So I wouldn't be shocked if it continues throughout. So we'll need to read in a text file. We'll have to split things up into chunks in some way, process those chunks, and then that will somehow give us the answer. In this instance, we want to split each of these up into a separate elf, as it were. And the split in this case is going to be on a blank line, which is essentially two returns in a row. And so my strategy here is to take this and split on the returns. That's going to give me the elves. And then for each elf, I'll process that to get the total number of calories for that elf. And then I can just take the max of that. Um, and to process a given elf, we'll have to split on new lines, take, take these strings, parse them in numbers, um, and then that'll give us a vector of numbers. So, um, or we could actually have the processing of the elf give us the total. Hmm. Might make more sense to have the processing of the elf just go ahead and give us the total. Uh, yeah, that's probably the thing to do. So we'll have the, the elf give us, to process an elf, we'll just get the total for that elf because that's all we need um, at the moment. If you've got questions, comments, suggestions, and if you've actually done some of these, by all means, holler. Um, if you've got some like cool trick for how to do something here. Um, and then I'll also say one thing here. So if you're not familiar with Rust, um, the main function of Rust can return nothing or it can return a value. Um, and in particular, uh, it's not uncommon to return a result type that is, and a, a result type is either a value or an error. Um, and in this, there is a standard result type, but we're going to use the anyhow result type which allows us to just specify the type uh, being returned uh, and not have to specify the error type, which will then be assumed to be anyhow colon colon error. So it'll be the error type inside the anyhow crate. So this is saying we're going to return nothing. We're not going to return any value, um, but we could possibly return an error um, if that seems if that's appropriate because the parsing failed for example so let's see if we can make something happen here so i'm uh say the input file i'm gonna give that a name because that'll make some things easier uh in the error handling um and because of the way since i was doing um the I was working initially in both Clojure and um, Rust. I had the inputs kind of all up at the top level um, with Clojure Advent being a subdirectory and Rust ed, well, a, a, 
sibling directory and Rust Advent being a sibling directory. Um, you could imagine a universe where inputs would be inside Rust Event Advent, and then you wouldn't need the dot dot. But this is how I set it up because I was interested in doing it in two or more languages at the time. So that's this says you know go up from the Rust Advent directory to the inputs and down to day one input. And then we'll read the file. Um, actually, let me make sure I got, there we go. Um, so we'll use the FS crate, which has a read to string. Uh, so we'll just read the whole thing in as a string. We could read the lines independently. But that'll make that would make the splitting and everything a little more complicated. So I'm going to assume that none of these inputs are ginormous um, and worrisome in terms of the amount of memory on a modern piece of hardware. So I'm just going to read the whole thing into memory and process it there. And then we need to provide a path, which will be our input file. Now. This is the first place where we have an error handling issue. Read to string returns a result type because reading could fail. Um, if it succeeds, we should get a string value back, but it could fail for a whole host of reasons, right? The file might not be there. We might not have permission to read it. Wada, wada, wada. Um, there could be an error in the that comes up during the reading itself. Maybe the drive unmounts mysteriously halfway through the read. It doesn't seem super likely, but stranger things have happened. And so I really just want the string. I don't really want to care about the error business. And one option, and this is what I did when I went through this the first time, is just unwrapped everything. So close that. And now contents is the string. Um, so the unwrap says, take that result. If it's a success, if it's the OK um, uh, branch of the enumeration, variant of the enumeration, then get the string out of it and assign that to contents, and we're good. If it's the error um, variant, then blow up, panic, the program ends. So that could work, but the, one of the nice things about the anyhow crate is that I can do this instead. And now I still get my string. So if it succeeds, this will extract the string from the result and assign it to contents. If it fails, instead of just panicking, we actually return the error type, which in this case still amounts to panicking. But if this was part of a function that returned something somewhere, by returning the error type, we would give the calling function the opportunity to do something about it. Whereas if we just panic, the calling function just dies. And it has no way of interacting with us on that. So something like this is, uh, I think, a, a better long-term approach. And something I think I need to, like, learn to use more often and more effectively, which is one of the reasons I wanted to experiment with it here now. Um, so, uh, so that would give us the contents of the file. Now, one of the other things that Anyhow does is it allows us to attach contexts to errors to provide some additional information. So, if we if if this just dies, um, let's say we change this to underscore xxx. Now that should fail. So if we run, we get error, no such file or directory. This doesn't really tell us very much. It doesn't tell us what file we were trying to open, for example. 
So we would have to sort of chase back through the world and figure out where that came from and what file it had been trying to open, which is not super helpful. So we could add a context instead to this. Um, with context. And with context takes a closure. That so this is a closure of no arguments that when executed will do whatever the body of the closure is. And the idea is that you don't pay the price of generating the error message unless the error actually happens. Um, so there's also just a dot context that takes a string that is always constructed um, and they both work, um, but dot context will always pay that price, whereas dot with context will actually probably be a little slower when it gets called because it's got the closure to deal with. But since it will very rarely get called, presumably the, you want to optimize for the common case. And in this case, the common case is that everything worked. Um, but we can then put some kind of nice message here um, failed to open file. Oops, I wanted that. Um, input file. Now this will add this information. Um, so that string, uh, if the um, error happens. So if we save and rerun, we should get um, so error failed to open file this and we can look at it and go, oh, well, that's just the wrong name. And we still have the information we had before, um, but we get this additional information as well, which I think is actually pretty nifty. Oh, and I think I can just put input file here nowadays now that I think about it right confirm that I'm right about that uh, doodly doodly do yeah awesome and so now if we get rid of the xxx <coughs> and run we should fail because we hit the to do um, thread panicked it not yet implemented so we hit the to do and it blew everything up okay so I think we've successfully read the string. Yay! Now we want to split it up. So let elves be contents. So I want to split by um, adjacent returns. So if I have two returns in a row, um, that's when I'm going to want to split. Uh, and we can see that, oops, sorry, here, we're going to split when there's a return followed by then another return. So we want to split on pairs of adjacent returns. And now we've got elves is basically an iterator over string slices. So um, L elves, we could l use elves to loop over string slices that represent, for example, this, oh, undo, don't want to change things, that would be bad. This string here would be an elf. And this, now let's close this so that we have a little more vertical space this string here would be an elf. Um, so we want to deal with each of those. Um, and so we've got that. And I want to, let's actually put you down here. So once I have an elf, I want to process an elf 
Um, so I can say map process elf. And that's gonna be a compiler error at the moment because we have no function process elf. Um, and so we want to uh, elf stir is a stir slice and we want to return a u size. And so if I, if I have a function that takes a string slice and returns a u size, an unsigned integer, um, then mapping that across my elves is going to give me um, the uh, iterator of u sizes. So it used to be an iterator of uh, string slices. Now it's an iterator of u sizes. Um, and then I want to find the largest of that because that's the goal. So I should just be able to say max. Uh, and that almost gets me there. So max is built into uh, the iterator uh, tools in Rust. Um, so both min and max exist. And I can call them on an iterator and they will go through the items in the iterator and give me back the largest thing. But what I get back is an option U size, not a U size. And that's because max can fail. If the list is empty, max doesn't know what to do. Um, and so if the list is empty, we're going to get the none variant on option. And if the list is non-empty, we'll get the sum variant with the actual value we want. So what we might want to, so if we had just, if we just said dot unwrap here, then that would become u size. Um, so this name's not great here anymore. So max elf calories, something like that, um, would be a u size. And then our, we would, at this point, we just can print, print line, the maximum calories for an elf was blah, blah, max elf calories. To do. And then we'll return it. Okay. Um, because we have to return a value. Um, and if you're returning a result that wraps a unit type, you often see this as the type returned at the end. Like everything's been fine. So we'll return okay with a unit type because we have nothing to send back. Um, so this works, assuming we did process elf. It's got an unwrap in it. Let's come back to that. Let's actually go ahead and get process elf going, convince ourselves that we're doing a reasonable thing, and then we'll uh, come back and think about the unwrap. Um, so processing an elf. Um, so an elf, if I grab an example here, uh, an elf is a string that is a sequence of numbers each on their own line. For example, boom. Okay. Um, and our goal is to split that into individual numbers. Uh, 
or into, yeah, numbers. Parse them into ints. Well, let's say u size values and add them up. Okay. Um, and if I was being a little more careful, I'd probably actually paste the whole problem description in here, but uh, I'm not going to mess with that. That it's easy enough just to flip over to here when we need to look th things up for now. So, okay. Um, so processing an elf. So in the same way that we split on new line here, pairs of new lines, we're going to want to split on single new lines, or uh, we can in fact uh, split on uh, elfster.split on white space. Um, and actually, I'm going to say let total equal so that we can see what the types are as we go. Um, so split ASCII white space, that's actually just, that's actually really just an iterator. Um, uh, but it's a special iterator returned by the dot split underscore ASCII underscore white space call on a stir. Um, but it's just an iterator over string slices. Um, so we, we can still act as an iterator on that. So we can, for example, map parsing across that. So we can say dot parse or map, and we'll have an S, um, which is an actual, which is, actually, if we want to give it a better name, we could say a calorie stir, and we want to parse Uh, I never remember the syntax for this. Oh, it's s dot parse. That's my problem. And the problem is it doesn't know what we want. Uh, so like if we just stopped there, in fact, it, oh yeah, I figured there'd be an error. Oh, I called it, that was part of why I wasn't getting the autocomplete I was hoping for. I used the wrong name. Okay, um, so the problem here is it doesn't know, scroll down, it doesn't know what to parse it to. And so we need to tell it. Um, and so it gives us a hint here that we could specify the generic argument, colon, colon, angle bracket, and then what we're parsing um, to. Uh, and so that would go here, colon, colon. And if we say u size, I think that will work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is giving us back a result u size or parse int error. So we're going to get an iterator over these result types. This is one of the places where it gets a little weird. Um, but um, we're going to have these result types because parsing could fail. We might have a string that's like Fred, and Fred doesn't parse to a number. Um, because not even in hex does it parse to a number because R is outside of the scope of hex. Um, so it needs to be able to say, hey, that didn't work. We weren't able to parse that as an integer. Um, and so we're going to get not a iterator over U sizes. We're going to get an iterator over result types. Um, and that's a little awkward, although it turns out that sum, the built-in sum operation, can handle that. Um, uh, it can give us, uh, oops, or not. Oh, 
that didn't know what to add up to. Um, the So it says, oops, come here. Consider giving total an explicit type. So the problem is that dot sum can sum over a result of iterator of results, but it doesn't know what to make. Um, and we can tell it either by giving total a type or giving sum a type. Um, so we can put a colon colon type uh, turbo fish thing in the sum call, or we can do it in the total call. Let's actually do it up here. Um, now let's be naive and let's try doing just u size. And that should fail because this sum is going to give us um, uh, it's going to give us a sum result u size or parsint error. So we're going to get a sum type that wraps a result type that wraps a u size or a parsint error. And that's the problem here is we've said total is just a u size. If we said total was result u size parse int error, then I think that will work, although it probably doesn't know about parse int error. Yeah, like import that bud. Um, so that I think will compile. Now that's not probably what we want to do. Um, I think we want to um, again use question mark uh, in the right place to deal with this problem. But this is what we would get at this point. Um, uh, and so great, we've got a result, a total. And that really is what we want. I mean, this U size is the U size we want to return at this point. So we could just say, um, well, again, let's be crude and just say unwrap. Oh, actually, now if we do that, this isn't going to be right. And if I just say U size, I think it's going to, not going to be able to infer what it needs to infer. Um, yeah, it still wants to know. Um, it can't figure out what sum we want here. Um, so we would actually have to say, put that result thing in here. U size parse int error. So we did that. Now, so we basically moved the specification for what kind of summing sum ought to do down into the call to sum. So we're saying what kind of sum? This kind of sum is what we're after. And then we're unwrapping to get rid of the error case and just returning the u size. And then at this point, we could return total. And we probably have the right answer. I don't think we'd, I'd be... I'm not happy about the error handling, and we're going to want to deal with that. But this, I think, actually would probably work if I haven't made some silly mistake somewhere. So I don't know. Let's find out. The maximum calories for an elf was 75,622. Now, the real question is, is that actually correct? Um, so let's put it in the box and see if it's correct. Submit. And that's not the right answer. Your answer is too high. Curiously, it's the right answer for someone else. Oh! Oh! Ho Very cool. Yes, this is almost, so our code's almost certainly correct. Um, my input is from another account. So I started this. You can log in through GitHub or Google or Twitter or Reddit. Um, you have to use one of those OAuth services. And I started logged in through GitHub. And there isn't a way to reset your answers in Advent of Code. 
and I wanted to start over again at the beginning here in the stream. So I was just like, oh, fine, I will um, just log in under a different account and um, that'll take care of things. I didn't expect them to change the inputs when you changed accounts, but apparently they do. And so all my puzzle inputs uh, that I've got over here, all these inputs, these are actually going to be wrong for this account. So I actually need to nuke these guys. Um, delete that. And make a new file. Input. So I think it called it day 01 input. Oh. And then I'm going to have to get the input from uh, advent of code again and paste that in and now rerun. And we get a different number, 74,394. And now we will attempt to submit that. And hopefully a minute has passed. I assume it has. I babbled a lot. Submit. Go. Hey, that's the right answer. Um, so that was weird. I hadn't thought about that uh, as a possibility. I just assumed. Um, yeah, I don't know why I assumed that. I assumed, I guess, that the... Um, results would all be... Or the inputs would be the same for everybody, but... It makes sense that they would have the inputs be different for different people so that if I shared my number, it wouldn't help you. Um, uh, you couldn't just like punch in all the numbers um, uh, and get the right answer. Um, so that's interesting. Well, that's very cool. So, okay. Um, we want, I want to... Actually, I'm going to make a, hmm, I was thinking of making a test. So then as we modify things, we know we haven't broken stuff. Um, I, I'm a, I don't know that I've ever checked this, but I'm assuming main is just a function and that I can write tests against main. Um, oh, but it doesn't return anything. Um, I could make it return something. So I could say this is result u size. And return max elf calories here. Uh, maybe I can't. Uh, I may not be able to return anything but the unit type. Uh, yeah. So I can't return anything but the unit type here. Well, that's too bad. Um, so put that back to that. And then, so I probably want to have do, 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 do. At some level, I guess I want this is my input and max elf calories is my output. So I probably want a function that does that and then main will call that. Um, so we could say fun day 01 part one and it takes an input file sister slice and returns a u size we're going to basically take all of this and put it here and then we'll call day 01 part 1 input file oh and I guess I did want to return because I want to if I'm going to write a test let 
max elf calories equals that. And so this actually wants to be up here. And this, actually, I can just return that and get rid of the name. Boom. Boom. So I think that will still do the right thing. Whoa! No, 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 no. Much badness. Um, oh! Why is this not like red and shouty? Um, so the problem is this is set to return a U size but we're actually returning oh we're using the question mark here and question mark only works if you're returning a result type so that's not good um so you got to be turning a result or an option type if you're going to use the question mark um and i'm returning a u size so that's not going to work so this needs to become result u size and that makes the question mark happy but it makes all this stuff red and shouty oh because we now have it's a result so we have to actually put it in something so let's go ahead and say let max elf calories equals that and then we'll return okay max elf calories do 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 um this is oh aha so this is grumpy because this is now a result type and we don't want to print that so let's be bad oh no actually maybe i don't have to be bad maybe i can just be yeah so question mark because of anyhow that question mark will um return the result type uh, if there's an error it'll return the error type immediately if there's an error and if it's not then it'll extract the value and assign it so if we get the u size um It'll just assign that to max elf calories, and that's good. Everything appears to be green. Let us try going again. Do 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 seventy four three ninety four. I think that's the right answer from before. Oh, it doesn't tell us. And I I think that's I think that's the same answer. So let's assume that's the same answer. Then now I can now I can write a test around this guy. Um, so uh, CFG test uh, mod test. We'll let's say day one because we might want to have. Um, a test for day two as well. Uh, use super, not user, super bang. Um, all I really care about is day one, part one, but yeah, I mean, all I really care about is day one, part one. Let's just do that. Um, and then, um, We'll declare a test function uh, part one and so we want to let uh, result the day one part one of ooh I need this to be outside of here so I can get at it hi I Cooper um, yes 
so there's actually several unwraps that I want to turn in um, into not unwraps and question marks. So as soon as we get this test passing, then my goal would be to try to clean up uh, the unwraps that are floating around here. Um, so there's unwrap. So there's uh, three of them. Uh, this one on line 27, this one on line 62, and then we'll, oh, there's two of them. So I, I would like to get rid of this guy and this guy. So we absolutely want to get rid of that. Full marks to you for noticing. So I agree with you 100%. But I figure I want to get the test passing first because that'll give us some... Uh, uh, yeah, so you're right, is it too? We are going to have to do some mapping between an option and a result type. Um, because uh, this guy right here is an option type because max returns an option and our day one part one returns a result. So if we just tried to question mark it, like if I just question mark it here without doing anything else, we're going to get an error um, because it's going to be like, whoa, you've got a question, an option here and a result there. Why am I, why am I not getting, I should be getting an error here. I know that there is one. Oh, oh, it, it happened. Oh, it's because this error down here. Fine. Um, uh, if I comment that out, will that cause this error up here to show up? Bro. Oh, I can't spell C F G. I've got all these other errors that I think are masking the actual problem. There we go. Now we finally got the question mark. And so it's grumpy because question mark can only be used on results, not options in a function that returns a result. So because we're returning a result, but max returns an option, it's all like fussy. But it um, uh, there are ways that we can move between options and results. And so we'll get there in a hot second. So um, I'm going to put this back to an unwrap for now. And then we'll come clean that up. Um, so let's see if we come back to here. Uh, so yeah, I need to, so I'm going to put, comment that back out. I need to put this up here. This probably should be a static. I think I can do that. Um, input or constant. Constant probably. Input file. And I think constants, you have to say what type they are. Uh, and then we'll grab that and do that. And does that actually work? The answer is no. Um, I think this is going to have to be a string if I move it out there. Yeah, the size for stir cannot be known at compilation time. So I actually am going to have to make this a string um, and convert that guy to a string. And now I th is that part going to work? Um, and then I want to comment that out. Um, Oh, so static would be better than const. Um, I don't know that I know the difference between them uh, in a meaningful way. Rust, difference, static, const. Uh, const and static. Um, Global variable sort of facility for static items. Oh, and I am looking for a global variable. Um, 
They're similar to constant, but static items aren't inlined upon use. That means there is only one instance, O, which for a string like this does make more sense. We wouldn't want multiple instances of that string. So, yeah, I think that does make more sense. Um, okay, and then there's also suggestions here from both Izitsu and Icopor that it should be a reference to, st uh, um, so let's start by saying that, that static. I think static also, um, so the suggestion is this and not make it a string. So it becomes not a stir, but a pointer to a stir. Um, oh, and I guess I was just looking. Yeah, so this is exactly the syntax that we needed. Um, so we want a pointer to this block of characters in memory. And we need the lifetime thing. Like if I took the lifetime thing out, I think I'm going to have grumpiness um, because it won't know how long that should live and my computer's being very slow tonight to like give me feedback I apologize um, come on that almost certainly should fail um, come on. what if we do this Cargo build. We'll see something there. There we go. Um, oh, actually, it seems to imply that the only problem is the name, really. Because this probably is one of these things that really ought to be like input file. Oh, that compiles. Well, that's interesting. So some it must be inferring that the lifetime is static, maybe because the values being declared is static. So it looks like you don't absolutely have to have the ampersand tick static there. Well, that's interesting. Who knew? Um, and now, uh, so I could get rid of that. And now this part, I'll have access to it, but let's run it, make sure we're still. Oh, and actually running it will give me an excuse to grab the value, which I'll want in the test anyway, because I keep forgetting to grab it. And then enough time passes that I forget what it was. So I'm going to just put that right there for now. Boom. So we will pass in input file. And then we will assert EQ bang 74394 and result. Boom, 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 boom. And now in theory, this will run. Oops, no, something's not happening. Um, oh, it's a result type. Oh, right. Day one returns the result type. So here, no one even was telling me that right there. Hmm. I think in a test, I'll just unwrap and I'll actually just live with the unwrapping. Um, run the test. And our test passes. Woo! Which we kind of knew it should because we just hacked in the answer. Okay. 
So now let's try to get rid of the unwraps. Um, and if we do cargo clippy, uh, we should get a whole bunch of warnings. So the unwrap, another unwrap. Oh, a redundant closure. Well, I should take care of that. Um, so two unwraps and a redundant closure. Well, we can do the redundant closure first. That's on line 63. Um, so it should just be stir, colon, colon, parse with the turbo fish. Uh, line 63. Uh, so I don't need all of this. I can just say stir, colon, colon, parse. And I don't want the open close at the end. And run our tests again. Run tests. And if I was being hardcore, I could totally write tests for process elf, yada, yada. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I mean, it would be the right thing to do probably on a real system, but we are just trying to solve some advent of code puzzles, not build an air traffic control system. And I guess, I mean, really, this is not the um, very rusty way to do this. This would be better to just do that. Um, and then we avoid having to come up with a name that we don't need. Um, run the test one more time, because it's fun. And then we'll get rid of the unwraps. Do, 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 cool. So unwrap. Let's find our unwraps. There we go. Let's take the first one. So as we discussed, Max here is returning an option. And we can't just put a question mark because we need this to be a result type. So if the Max fails, in our case returns none, um, uh, question mark doesn't know how to return to convert that into a uh, result type. So, bleh. so we need to convert an option to a result, and there are some different ways we can do that. This um, both bleh, OK or and OK or else are probably our best bets. And they both take a um, uh, option and turn it into a result. Um, and the difference between them, wah, wah, let's look at it, or else. Or else takes a um, closure and only runs it if necessary, whereas or always generates whatever value you're using um, as the alternative value. And so, or else is arguably um, the preferred method if you're doing anything. Now, the question at the moment is whether we're doing anything or not. And... I know from cheating and looking ahead a little bit that we are going to need to do something. So I'm going to go ahead and use the or else option. Um, uh, when I first was looking at this, it wasn't obvious to me that I was going to need to do something else. Well, actually, let's, uh, okay, let's just be super simple about it for starters. Um, bad things happened. So this is basically what I tried the first time. And now this won't work because we have a type problem. Um, and we finally got there, yeah. So the problem is that, um, and it's a little hard to see. I wonder if it's better in the terminal. Cargo build. Sometimes the terminal messages are preferable. Um, Ah, yeah, so um, this string 
isn't an error, a, a thing of type error. And so because we're converting into anyhow error types, um, so anyhow error needs to be able to somehow make anyhow errors out of whatever the error actually is. And if I just plop a string, a stir there, it's like, no, I don't know how to do that. So I need that to be some kind of error thing that anyhow knows how to deal with. Um, and there's a few options there, um, but I think the simplest one is there is an anyhow bang, anyhow bang macro that um, lets uh, that basically creates a anyhow error on the fly with the message that you've provided. This is clearly a terrible message. We have to fix that. Um, but this will, oh, we have to import something or that won't work. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, mm, do I need to make an error? Yes, I need to import something. Um, anyhow, anyhow, that's what I need. So I just need to add anyhow to this. Now, I think we compile, and I think we will run, run the tests. Do, 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 do. And the test pass. Awesome. Now, we don't want bad things happen. That's a terrible idea. Um, so, how does this fail? This fails if the list of elves is empty. Um, so we could say um, there were zero elves in the input file. Okay. And now that should take care of that unwrap. And our test should still pass. Come on, you can do it, little computer. There we go. So, so that's so your um, Icapor, um, your question about putting the question mark here. You you were right. That was I think definitely the right thing to do. It just needed this little tidbit here. Now the I think if we look at um, Clippy cargo Clippy, I think Clippy is grumpy about that. Um, because we do some stuff there. Um, yeah, right here. Um, use of OK or followed by a function call. And so they recommend trying this instead, OK or else, and then an empty closure that calls the anyhow bang. Um, so since the anyhow bang does some stuff, um, it recommends switching that to OK or else. So let's do that or else. Um, boom, boom, boom. And I think that should take care of that. And let me make sure the test passed and then we'll get to your question. Okay, so we're still good. So now your question is, can we just return max elf calories directly? And I think the answer is yes. We could remove the question mark. And because if, let's say, let's remove the question mark, then the type becomes result u size error, um, which is what we were shooting for. So we ought to be able to now return just max elf calories. And if that works, 
then we could even get rid of this name. Um, let me actually just make sure it works because I'm paranoid. Run tests. Doodly, 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 doodly. Yay. So now we could actually just get rid of this name completely. And you know, boom. Oh, we need to get rid of the semicolon so that it knows that we're returning that value. And run the test again. And we pass. So you're completely right. Well done. So now we improved the error handling a little bit and got rid of a name. And it's always a good day in my book if we got rid of a name. Um, and a few lines of code, but uh, we got rid of a name. And that's always a happy thing. So that takes care of that unwrap. Now the other unwrap down here, oh no, that it doesn't mind that one because that's in a test, but we do want to get rid of this guy here. Um, now one might hope we could just put a, oh, well, actually we've got to be a little careful. We can't just put a question mark here because this isn't returning a result type, but it should, right? The fact that we, have a, an unwrap here it makes more sense to have this return a result type so that we can process it somewhere up the food chain if we want to we won't but we could and it would be better if we um uh return a result type here so let's try that let's try just making this result u size and just get rid of the unwrap. And then we also are going to need to, where we call process elf right here. Oh, yeah, we're going to have two issues because now this is going to be a result type. Um, so we can't call max on it in the same way. So we're going to have a couple of issues, but let's deal with this guy down here first. Um, so here's the problem. We're expecting a result where the error type is of type anyhow error, but we've got a result where the type is a parse int error. Humph, that's annoying. So we need to somehow convert from the parse int error that we have here to an anyhow error inside this result thing. Um, and that's going to be weird. Um, now let's see. Uh, I think that, um, we need to, how did I deal with this? Um, Oh, so I think, yeah, right here, I'm saying that the type that we want is U size, a parse int error, but we don't want that. Um, we actually want just result. Now, U size, can I just do that? No, that didn't work. And that's because... Yeah, I've just sort of swept it under the rug. We haven't, um, this is still going to return a parse int error when it fails and not a anyhow error. And so we've somehow got to convert the error that comes out of parse into a um, anyhow error. And I think there's probably a bunch of ways we can do this. One that I stumbled into kind of by accident, um, but which I think actually I liked, was um, that we want, it would be nice to add some context here. Like if we get a parse int error at this point, it's not gonna tell us anything about what the string that we were trying to parse was. It's just gonna be like, eh, I tried to parse an int, it failed. Um, and that's not super helpful. And so if we use the context tools, 
Um, and anyhow, that's going to do two things for us. One, it's going to give us some additional information, which is cool. It also kind of by accident, I mean, it's not really by accident, obviously, it's all designed this way, but it has the useful side effect of converting the parse in it error into an anyhow error, which will then take care of this sum business for us, and the types will all work out. So if we change this to be um, S, uh, and let's tr do S dot parse, uh, open close dot um, whoa not context go away you go back down there for now we're going to want to add with context and we'll say failed to parse s to u size. Boom, boom, boom. So here we're going to parse. That could fail. Um, oh, so you're saying, yeah, I, so we could possibly put it after the sum, but then we can't, we don't know which string failed. By putting it in the map, yeah, right. Like you just said, we wouldn't have S then. Um, and it would be nice to be able to say what string failed. So that then you could go search through your input file for that string um, and realize, oh, somehow a bogus character crept in. Um, so this does deal with it. Um, and now everything compiles. Now I'm curious, I do, actually I wanna sort of confirm that what your what you suggested works is it so, so I'm gonna also so I'm gonna actually str parse um, u size and then comment that part out and then add the dot actually we just put a context in because we don't know anything about the parsing problem. Um, there was a problem parsing. And, oh, I probably have to import something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah, so we're still in the iterator at this point. So it has to be after the sum. Yeah, and you even said that. I put it in the wrong place. Um, yeah. So the sum returns result type. Uh, and it doesn't like that. Um, trait bound, anyhow, sum, parse, int. So it, oh, I think this probably has to say that this is still parse int. Parse int error, if I want to do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we need this to remain a not anyhow error because some, since these will be parse int errors, some knows how to pass them along. And then the context turns the result with a parsent error into a result with an anyhow error and it would return okay. Um, wrong choice of words. It would return correctly, um, successfully. So yeah, that would work. We just don't have access to S there. And I do think having S is useful. So I'm gonna undo that and uncomment that. Get rid of that, and this goes away. Boom. We're back to where we were. Um, a map error might also work without a context. I was wondering about that, whether 
if we map the error into an anyhow error, I mean, one of the nice things about anyhow, anyhow is it does that mapping for you for free when it can. Um, but we know it's going to be a parsing error. So in theory, we ought to be able to um, work. Well, let's try it. Why not? So I think, if I understand correctly, you're suggesting we go back to map, stir colon colon parse colon colon u size. Go back to there. And then we, oh, I guess we're still going to have, that's still going to happen after the sum. So we're still going to not have the, um, still not going to have S. Why are we grumpy? Um, Oh, because I haven't um, done the map. Map er. So that takes one kind of result to another kind of result. Um, and then you're suggesting into into and that maps the parse int error into a anyhow error for us and we get it to work without the context. Nice! Not what I want because I think I like the context in this case, but it's nice knowing that that worked. Um, and so the into into um, calls whatever the implementation of from t for u chooses to do. So we're going from parse int error to anyhow error. And it knows that because we've got a parse int error here and we have a anyhow error here. Um, and it knows in anyhow how to convert from parse in errors to anyhow errors, which is all that's happening whenever it does the question mark. Um, so that's cool. Again, I don't think I'm going to do it, but it's cool to know that it was a thing. Let me run the test because that's always kind of fun. And then we'll put it back. Whoa. Hello. This does not compile somewhere. Let's see, was that a compiler? Cargo build. Yes. So the OK or else expected a use size found in result on lines 24. So right here. What happened and why? Oh, there we go. Now it's finally doing a th thing. So what did we... Oh, we never got around to dealing with the fact that this returns a result now. All right, that's right. Okay. So I'm actually going to put this back to the this version because I like that, I think, the best of the options. So that compiles that and now this is going to be a mess up here okay so the reason this is a mess is now um this is this was an iterator over u sizes now it's an iterator over result types max actually works on the result types which is kind of cool um uh so it takes us from a bunch of u result u sizes to a single result u size. Um, and then OKR else gives us a result. 
Oh. Why does that not... Oh, because we, we've got an option wrapping a result. So the OK or else is going to give us back a result containing a result. Yeah, so we're looking for a result U size, and we've got a result with a result in it. So we really want to somehow not have both of those results. And there's a good way to do that. And I don't remember what that is. Um, let me think. I feel like maybe OK or else stopped being the right thing to do. Um, Flatten. So flatten. Let us contemplate flatten. Rust flattened. So it flatten let one la layer level of nesting. That can of things that can be turned into iterators. I'm not convinced. But that's the, uh, that's a bunch of other stuff. I feel like that is, yeah, so flatten on a result gives us, let's see, let's do rust flatten result. Oh, well, actually, this is almost exactly the question that we're asking. Um, blah, 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 blah. The type result be result, result, result tree. Yeah. And so... Um, And then, I feel like that's, yes, that I think makes more sense. Um, so if something's okay, call the operation, otherwise return the error. And so that allows us to stop something if we need to, otherwise we can continue. Similarly, would be the OK or thing. Um, where's and uh, OK or is probably well, who knows where OK or is. Um, OK or do 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 FN OK or or not. So that's weird. And then it's right there. Okay, or is not here. Huh. Well, let's have a look. See if we can make. So what do we want? We want Well, yeah, and then doesn't really make sense here. Cause we don't have another thing hmm so and then takes an op and if that's an okay then we call the op on it But we don't have a, we don't have another action other than, oh, so maybe it's the,
Maybe what we want to... Oh, can we just apply a context on this? What happens? Frogs. Does that convert that into the thing that we want? The answer appears to be no. Um, yeah, stop it. Yeah, we still got result, result. Um, That's weird. Okay. We could try that. Dot flat. It is not happy. Result flattening is an unstable library feature. Well, me, 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 me. So it does. Oh, it does look like it, it does want to do what you said. That if we have result, result, as long as the errors are the same, um, then this would do the right thing. But I don't have uh, nightly running. And so that's not going to work. Um, good try, though. I didn't even realize that was going to be a thing. Um, where did Ord come into all this? That's weird. I'm not sure I... Oh. Max. Um, yeah. Oh, well, maybe that's a reasonable thing to do. Let's try that. So dot unwrap or I hadn't thought about that. Um, and And then we would just put the anyhow thing in and probably or else with this in. Oops, let me paste that back in. Paste you in there. Cut you out. And What are we grumpy about? Oh, I'm missing a close parent. Duh. Okay. It doesn't like that. So it wanted a result. And it just got the error. Oh. That's not going to work because we don't want. Oh, I think we just put an error around it, right? But I think I thought that's what anyhow bang was doing for us already. Now it's grumpy. Oh, that's probably need anyhow. Error. 
error. No, I wanted. Is that even making sense? No. So is it who says, I'm not quite sure what the org logic for results is. So would it ever return an error if there was an actual value? So I think as long as there's at least one value in max, it's okay. I think this you get the 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 none variant only when the list is empty. Um which is kind of weird like that really shouldn't happen but of course you know all kinds of bad things uh have been the result of somebody going well that should never happen and then not dealing with it properly um so Just a sec. I want to make sure I understand Rust unwrap or else. Is it going to be in here? Unwrap or else. Returns the contained OK value or computes it from a closure. So I think this is the problem. I think that unwrap or else isn't used to generate an error. It's used to generate a OK value if an error has happened somewhere else. And so I don't think that's really what we want. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think that's really the, the thing we're after here. So I don't think unwrap or else is the right thing to do. Um, because we really want what's the, what's the value we're going to put here if... If the max failed, what's the desired value? Um, which I guess could be a result type. So maybe maybe that's what I needed. Maybe this should be result. No. ERR. Open print. Anyhow bang. Oh, come on. Well, that part seems happy. Um, yeah. So, okay. Lots of discussion. So, is it suggesting collecting to a result to get the error out? Um, or max the transpose to something to OK or else. Um, so I'm not quite sure I understand what this grumpiness is about. 
So somehow, anyhow, Ord is not satisfied. But Max was okay with anyhow errors a hot second ago. And so why is it grumpy about them now? Uh... Oh, 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 no, I understand that part now. So there's another piece of this we have to deal with. Process elf by returning a result means that this is an iterator over results. Oh, but Max seemed to be okay with that, I thought. If we comment that line out, no, Max is not okay with that. Is that just because of the return type? Yeah. So, but if we say unwrap, oh, Max is not happy with that. So we do have a, a trait bound problem. So I don't think Max likes getting an iterator over results. Um, uh, and so we're going to have to deal with the fact that process elf returns a uh, an iterator over result types. And so collecting would be a way to deal with that. Um, so if we collect this into a vector of U sizes, then we can call max on that. Um, it's, it seems a little annoying to have to collect and then call dot iter again. Um, but maybe that's just going to be what has to happen. Um, let's try that, and then maybe we'll come back and, and play with some alternatives. But I do think we have to deal with the fact that this is going to be... Um, yeah, that would be another possibility, is to ignore the errors. I don't really like that idea. I mean, part of the whole point... If we can do that, we should have just called unwrap in a bunch of places and moved on. Um, because that's simpler. Um, but here it'd be kind of nice to actually do something with it. So let's let's comment you out for a hot second um, and say dot collect um, and let's give this a name. Let um, uh, Weights equal, uh, actually this is really elves, elves equal, and uh, put a semicolon there and put it to do down here so it doesn't shout at us about a return. Now, it doesn't know what we're collecting into. So if we say we want to collect into a vec of u size, which is where we're headed, that'll fail because we have this map of results. Um, question mark. Where are we going to put the question mark? I don't think we can put it I mean, this is the thing we want to question mark, but I don't think we can inside there. Um, I feel like I've tried this before. Um, uh, process elf e question mark. I think does not do a happy thing. So I think here, yeah, you can't. The question mark operator can only be used in a closure that returns result or option. And the point of the question mark was to avoid 
returning um, the thing. So that's not going to be good. So yeah, so we have to say we're going to collect a result. Um, uh, oh, yeah, right, right, right. I put the result in the wrong place. We could say we'll collect a vector of results, but we'd rather collect a result of a vector of u sizes, boom, like that. Except that didn't work. Uh, oh, it's because that needs to be in, oops, ah, in angle brackets. There we go. So we're saying we want to take that vector and so at this point or iterator sorry over results will collect into a single result that's a vec u size or um a uh anyhow result now we can question mark that and we get a vector of u sizes and so if something happened along the way this would propagate the error out. Otherwise, we're, we've got a vector of u sizes and life is good. And now we can boom, 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 elves.iter.max. Um, and okay or else, um, anyhow, oops, bang, bang, pipe, pipe, anyhow, bang, there were zero L's in the input file. And, oh yeah, we don't want to do any more. Ah, oh, not happy. Why are we not happy? Um, so actually, let me. Because we can see things better. Ooh, try fold. That sounds like that could be useful. Oh, we got a reference somewhere. Why did we get, oh, Max gave us a reference to a U-size? Seriously? Oh, sure, sure. I still don't think about that. Yeah, because we are happy consuming that vector because it's temporary to this function and that'll allow us to have U-sizes instead of References to use sizes. Okay, so I think everything compiles. Let's actually run the tests. And then I actually want to look at your um, try fold idea. Hey, the test pass. Um, oops, no, not that. Undo. Um, so let's get rid of this mess. Oh, and actually, I think we probably have a bunch of Cargo Clippy. I think we have a bunch of. Oh, not just one unused import. That's not that bad. I wanted to make sure we cleaned anything like that up. Okay. Clippy's happy. Yay. Okay. So then, is it too suggesting trifold might be a thing? Let us look at that. Rust, trifold. Trifold. Iterator method that applies a function as long as it returns successfully, returning a single final value. Trifold takes two arguments. 
an initial value and a closure with two arguments, blah, blah, blah. And it returns uh, so it returns a uh, oh it returns an option type. So if somebody fails on us, then we get a none back instead of a sum. Hmm. I feel like we really wanted a result though, because we want to be able to say, well, if nothing else, it'll work better with anyhow, but it'd be nice to be able to have context things that are like, hey, this is what happened here, whereas we're just going to get none if something fails. Um, but it feels like it's kind of the right idea. Um, does it work with results? I don't know, because I don't know what R is, or try is. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. So it does look like try will work with result. So maybe we could make it work. That'd be kind of nifty. Um, so, and if we're going to use fold, we could do the process elf and the maxing all together in the same action leaving the this step out because it would be combined into the fold okay i'm going to just comment all that out and let's start with um let else equal contents dot split two new lines dot try fold and try fold is going to take an initial value b um which in our case because we're returning a maximum value doesn't really have a good initial value um Hmm. Is there a try reduce? Try reduce, which doesn't take an initial value and assumes that there's at least one value. Let's do that instead. Try reduce. And so this is going to take a single closure which takes two values and the first is the result so far and the second is the new value to be pulled in so pipe um max so far um and an elf and we're gonna return the larger of max so far oh ooh I don't want that to be a stir is that gonna be a problem I bet it is um Oh, does it only work with results in nightly only? Really? Uh, that would be worth figuring out before we go any farther. Yeah, 
Yeah, because all these examples are just... Oh, and it even says this is a nightly only. Oh, poop. Okay, well, try reduce isn't going to work. But it was a good idea. Um, it was a very good idea. Just not an available idea for us at the moment. Oh, but try fold was still available? Okay. Try fold. Um... And so the initial value, we really want like minus infinity, um, which I guess for u size is going to be zero. The smallest value would be zero, and it'd guarantee. Oh, Eve, a much better idea. Um, can we use a none if we're going to be? Um, pulling together results or do we need it to be an error um hmm i feel like it's gonna need to be an error um yeah because we get a oh i see what you're saying we get a result option well i don't know Let's try it. Say none, and then um, but I um, but that means none's going to be the value here, and I don't really want a none there. I'd like a number. Um, I mean, I guess we could do here. Let's put you down here. Let's just be crude. And if we say unwrap, we should get a number or fail dot. Can I? No, I can't. How do I just compute the max of two numbers? Um, Rust max two numbers. I presume there's got to be. Well, there it is. Coomp max and then the two numbers. Okay. Ah, thank you, Nathaniel Bumpo. I appreciate that. So, uh, da, so coomp max and that. Ooh, I'm very excited if the expert's here. This is very cool. Um, I am decidedly not the expert, just to make that completely clear. Um, I have made a lot of progress in six, eight months, but I've still got a long way to go. Um, and so process elf, elfster, Oh, I think I just called it elf. Uh, and then question mark. Uh, and then that. Does it even remotely work? Uh, doesn't like that, but that's probably a use. Oops, yeah, come here. Come here. Oh, stop it. Thank you. That takes care of that. And I've got too many. So it doesn't like the question mark. Uh, because that closure doesn't return a result or an option. Because C comp max doesn't return a yeah it just returns type t so that's not gonna do the right thing um 
And to catch Nathaniel Bumpo up, in case, I don't know when you walked into this, but this works. And we were totally fine with that. Uh, we just were like trying to see if we could come up with a an alternative using trifold um, so that we didn't have to split up the process um, and collect everybody and then reiterate over it. Um, but there are a couple of issues. Trifold needs an initial value, which if this is going to be a question mark then that means that the body here is going to have to return a result type which means that this is going to be a result type which means that probably needs to be result 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 type we haven't even started looking at part two we've done part one like four different ways and fiddled with the um uh the air handling and a bunch of other stuff um so if you know through magicness that it might be useful to um yeah so maybe that's a good point maybe we ought to look at part two before we worry about over fancifying part one. Okay. I think I actually am sold on that, especially since we've been on this and now, Oh, actually we're done. Is it really nine o'clock? Oh, heavens to Betsy. This took forever. Um, so actually this is officially the end of the time, but I don't actually need to leave right now. So maybe we have a quick look at part two and see what that does. So let's, ah, no, stop. Let's make sure our tests still pass. Um, we've got some unused imports. I should do something about those. Whoa. That must have been an autocomplete somewhere along the line. Um, oh, and CMP is now gone. Do 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 Okay. And run the test one more time for fun. Da la la. There we go. Okay. So let's head back over here and head back to part two. Continue to part two. Okay. Uh, so they, we now want to do the total calories carried by the top three elves carrying the most calories. Um, so we actually, oh, so here max is not so useful anymore, which is probably worth knowing. Um, so we could just sort the, so actually now having the vector of calories and sorting it, um, is probably a reasonable thing to do. Um, so, so here where we have the vector, this is actually worth having. And then we want to sort that vector. And then the first thing in the vector is going to be the answer to the first um, let's see use the quick select algorithm that's a thing i don't know anything about rust quick select so i'm assuming this of woo um quick select rust Docs, what? No, doc. Um, oh, nifty. Yeah, so that would be better than sorting the whole thing. We can just say grab the three and um, 
uh, then I think, sorry, I think I accidentally dragged a window where I didn't, um, uh, oh, this is some other crate. Yeah, this is quick select. Um, but we don't know what, um, we're not sure what it's called. Uh, select nth unstable. Okay. Um, select nth unstable. Uh, that's probably in slice. Select nth unstable. We are the slice that the elements element at index is in its final sort of position. Has the additional property that anything to the left of index will be, oh, that's not quite. Yeah, that gives us a single position. We really want like the first three. I mean, we could presumably call select nth unstable uh, three times, but that seems kind of gross. Um, whereas that other crate No, it looked like it was probably also just selecting the nth, and we don't really want just the nth. Um, uh, hmm. Oh. Uh, oh, reorder the slice so the element at that position is its final sort of position. So if I, if I say two, then I know that the first two are small, a uh, big, well, yeah, I mean, bigger. Um, okay. It returns the triplet from the three or slice. The subslice prior to the index, the element at index, and subslice afterwards. Um, right. Um, right. And so if we say two here, we're guaranteed that, that this middle one is the next the next biggest but we don't have these guaranteed to be in the right order now we could sort them or just take the max of the two of them because there's only two um we do but on the left oh i skipped the important part of the documentation um just property the value at position i less than index will be less than or equal less than any value at j greater than index this ordering is unstable and o of n worst case it returns a triplet of the reordered slice The subslice prior to the index, the element at the index, and the sub subslice after the index. Um, right. I. Uh, 
sort is always ascending. So if I say two is my argument, I know these three guys are going to be my three biggest. But I don't know which of them is the largest without looking at these two. Which isn't hard. Um, although, so I am going to have to do some kind of max on these two guys. Um to figure out which one of these two is the largest in the case that we need the largest one. In the case uh, number three, we are just adding them up, so it doesn't matter. Um, but in the case, in the first case where we need to do the biggest one, I will have to compare those top two. Not a big deal, but we can do that. So yeah, this looks great. This looks like this would be super helpful. And um, order n, so it's going to be faster than sorting the whole thing. So that's cool. Um, so select nth unstable, and it's going to return a triple of the... Hmm... Yeah... And then we'll add this to the sum of these two, and we'll take the largest of those two. So we can actually just call dot max on this little on this slice here. And since there's only two things, that's going to be like fast. Or actually, probably just use comp because then we don't have to worry about the um, um, The, the fact that max returns that option. So that's cool. Okay, let's do that. We'll do that quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're right that, that as, as a faculty member, I know that we teach sorting more than we maybe should. I remember we had an alum who does um, high-end weather modeling out in the Boston area come back a few years ago and uh, a colleague of mine asked what sorting mechanisms they use. And he said, we never sort because we don't ever want to sort. We get this huge amounts of data. We never really want to sort all of it. We usually just want some of it, which is essentially the quick select that you're suggesting. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you 100% there. Um, okay, so... Now we've got our vector of u sizes, and so we want l's dot. I've already because I have a very small brain. Select nth unstable. Um, select nth unstable, and I want index two. Actually, do I want index two? Um, no. Because I want from the other end. So I need like length minus th length minus one, minus two, minus three, I think. Um, L's dot len minus three, I hope. And then that returns things that I really want to capture. So let small um, pivot and big be that. Okay. And that did a thing, but it didn't like part of the thing that it did. Um, what are we grumpy about? Cannot borrow elves as oh sure, let mute elves. That makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, I what what you said about intro sort and tim sort makes a lot of sense. Um, 
Okay, so now why are we grumpy here? Can't borrow elves is immutable because it is borrowed is mutable. Um, oh, so I just need to compute elves, the length. Um, let num elves equal elves dot len. And then this becomes num elves. Okay, so that did a thing, and I'll never use small, so I'm going to make that just underscore. Um, and now um, I want to let largest be some comp. Uh, what was it? STD comp? I think it was STD comp. Oh no, yeah, STD comp max. Here we go. Um, of big zero and big one. So that should be the largest thing that we have. And then the sum, sum of big three is pivot plus um, big zero plus big one would work. Um, And then that actually gives me the answers that I want. And I don't need to do any of that. Now, presumably, there this will throw errors if we didn't have, like this is assuming that there are certain numbers of uh, elements. So there's some error checking that's not happening here. Um, oh, yeah, so that needs to be star and, um, but this should work now. Okay. Now my splitting this off into part one and we've just done part one and part two kind of all together. Um, I'm going to undo splitting this out. Let's just pull all this back into main for now. And I'll blow up my tests and I'll fix that later because I want to get out of here and I'll have to tidy up after myself another day. Um, actually, if I just say to do, then that'll at least not shout at me. And my tests will at least compile, even though they even though they will fail. Um, so change that to largest. Whoops. And print line bang. The sum of the big three was sum of big three. Boom, bop, bibbidi boo. There we go. Now, in theory, we run? No. I have a feeling, yeah, we got a problem here, Houston. Um, what, what? Oh, that's weird. How did that not get changed? I must have remove some stuff that I didn't need to remove. Okay. Boom. Go work, please. Yeah, I know that's never used. Don't, don't care. Hey, that number matches from before. Let's see if this number works. Uh, boom. Boom. Boom, boom. 
Submit, please. Yes! We've solved day one. That took longer than I thought it was going to um, because we, not in a bad way. I mean, we learned stuff and we tried a bunch of things. So that's actually a good thing. Um, so I should clean this up. I'm not going to do it now because we've run 20 minutes long and I know for some people in Europe, it's very late. Um, uh, and uh, I, yeah, rearranging this into sort of some sensible functions uh, shouldn't be that big a deal. Maybe, yeah, that's not going to be that hard. Um, so that's very cool. Um, that's actually super cool. Actually, the select nth unstable, full thumbs up on that. Oh, thanks for following, Ikebor. Um, that is super good. Um, and that was very nifty. Um, and especially since we just needed three out of what is presumably very many elves. I think we printed it at some point. It was a lot of elves. Um, uh, hundreds of elves, probably not thousands of elves. Um, sorting the whole thing didn't make a lot of sense. So this is actually really useful. Um, that was very cool. Um, this would have been kind of a nuisance if there had been more than just these two here. And I'm going to have to think about the, um, the air handling, um, and wow. If there's, I assume there's got to be, um, well, I see films. Wonderful to see you. We're just finishing up. So, um, uh, apologies. We just did day one of the advent of code, the two parts. Um, but, uh, I'll actually be wrapping up here in just a second, but it's very nice seeing you again. Um, uh, so I assume there's some way to do this. It's probably like a get method or something that returns probably an option would make the most sense. Um, and I could probably use that, um, in some way to deal with the potential, uh, of not having these slots here. Um, let me actually one last thing and then we'll probably Let's run Clippy again, because it's always fun to see what Clippy's shouting about. Um, and uh, really nothing of consequence. An unused import, which I can clearly get rid of. And then this is just because I pulled the guts out of this function and am not calling it anymore. So um, if I rearrange things later, then that'll probably get fixed. So that's very cool. So I'm going to make a note to check to do, try to do a more, uh, let's see, an error checked version of these accesses. And I want to have extract day one or parts one and two out with tests um, but i will not mess with that right now that is very cool thank you all um yeah uh i'm doing advent of code uh in rust on wednesday nights so seven to nine and um saturday afternoon so advent of code Wednesday 7 to 9 p.m. and Saturday 2 to 4 p.m. and we're currently doing um, evolutionary computation in Rust on Tuesday from 10 to noon and evolutionary computation or um, web dev uh, on Sunday from 10 to noon. 
So the goal is to do web dev, but I've gotten stuck on some things and I need to get unstuck on those things. But if I can get there by Sunday, then we'll so come back to the web dev project. So I've got this web app written in you um, that the app is mostly there. It just needs some OAuth stuff to be able to sort of finish it off. I got totally bogged down in the OAuth and wanted to cry a lot. Um, and so that's been sort of been a holding pattern. And I think, um, I think I have a sense of how to move forward on it, but I need to put some work in, um, hopefully before Sunday to make that happen. So, okay. I think we're going to call that quits. Um, huge thanks to everybody, um, who shared stuff, uh, Zitsu, Ikepor, Nathaniel Bumpo all um, did a great job and were a huge help. So thank you all very much. I hope to see you again later. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.